Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the Android Central Podcast. It's episode number 72 for Thursday, September 29th, 2011. I can taste ice cream sandwich, and it tastes mm. good. At least, I think it'll taste good. Welcome to the Android Central Podcast. This is a very, very special podcast for those of you listening at home. It won't be quite as special as uh, it is for everybody who is watching live, and I say watching because we are, in fact, on video. We'd uh, threatened to do this for a long time, and now we're actually doing it. So uh, first, a very special thanks to Renee Ritchie, who is running the, uh, can we say Skyposaurus? Is that trademarked for Twit? It might, well, yeah, we'll call it the Mobile Nation Saurus, maybe. There you go. Uh, we need a better name. We'll come up with something. But uh, Renee has about 13 laptops strung together, and we are doing live video, and it's pretty damn cool. So there's Renee, and Renee's going to join us for the podcast tonight, too. Uh, Renee, if you don't know, everybody runs Tip B, our, uh, our uh, iOS site. And so there's Renee. Can I, I'm trying to find you in the direction as I'm, I'm pointing center square thing. to block. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. This will make no sense when you're listening to this in like five days. <laughs> and we've got Jerry Hildenbrand from the site. Howdy, everybody. I was just taking a drink. Sorry. I know. You have to time that right, don't you? And then mm-hmm. I'm going to catch you. See, and I, now I can watch you drink now, so that's yeah. the tell. And then from the Android Central Forums, we have Corey Streeter. Hey there. How's it going? Corey wasn't this drinking. This is so much better. Yeah, you like it? able to see you. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sold on it. I might have to clean up a little bit or something. We'll do like the uh, pre-central guys and wear ties. I don't know. Maybe. It just, I, I it just feels more natural. Now I, I actually have to pay attention because otherwise you'll see me nod off like yeah, this. It's true. So, so what do you guys want to talk about? It's been kind of a slow week. Um, not a whole lot going on, I think. No big announcements or events or leaks. <laughs> Android barbecue. Josh really wants to talk about the Android barbecue. <laughs> so we can start with that. Um, I'll be in Austin, Texas on Friday. We're going to the big Android barbecue. We'll be there all week. Me and Josh Munoz and Kevin Gossett from the forums and a whole bunch of other people are going to be there. I think we got about a thousand people, a whole bunch of other Android websites, a whole bunch of nerds in one place. Ashley Escada is going to be there uh, to help us do some video and stuff and just hang out and be a good time. So that's that. Um, I guess follow us on Twitter and Google+. Plus. If you're not already, and we will uh, share as much as we can. I mean, don't expect like news news to come out of it, but it's just going to be a really good time meeting a whole lot of people. That's the barbecue. Um, where you get? Where do you guys want to start? We got so much news. I don't know where to begin. Somebody pick something. About some ice cream. You want ice cream sandwich? Mm, we got ice yeah, cream sandwich. Totally. So it's coming at CTIA. I think that's pretty much a given. Um, I mean, we've gotten a lot of invitations to a lot of events before, a lot of Samsung events, the occasional Google event. This is the first time I've gotten one with both. (laughs) And and so we get the invitation for CTIA for Samsung's event. It looks a little different. Um, Looks, you know, not so much Samsung-y, but just different. Um, Still had the unpacked stuff, but the two tells for me were this. It has Samsung's logo and Google's logo. And then they're live streaming it on YouTube. So Samsung has streamed stuff before, but never on YouTube. It's always been some other service. Uh, so that's it. I think we're getting ice cream sandwich. I think we're getting the Nexus something. Um, now, Jerry, have we mentioned before that we expected the uh, next Nexus device to uh, be from Samsung? That's not news, right? Well, we mentioned it once or twice. <laughs> uh, it, this is, you know, almost a confirmation. So, yeah, it's news. Kind of news. News-ish. Have we mentioned October at all? Once or twice. Once or twice. <laughs> and then today, so we've actually had a couple big leaks of ice cream sandwich in the past couple days. Uh, Engadget was sent a video and some pictures of, and this is a little bizarre. It's a Nexus S that supposedly somebody bought off eBay. Um, and the dude, you know, boots it up, whatever. And it's got something that doesn't look like normal Android. In fact, it looks like that leak that came out probably about a month or so ago, maybe. We'd just seen a couple mm-hmm. screenshots. Mm-hmm. Uh, same color scheme, you know, very much the same sort of thing. It also looks a lot like that ice cream sandwich launcher that's out there that really isn't ice cream sandwich at all. Um, so, you know, Jerry and I were squinting at this thing. I'm of the mind that it's real. Where do you guys stand? Show me the about screen. Was that in there? Well, I, the, see, with, without knowing more about the person that had it, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It could be real. 
uh, I could fake everything you saw. So could anybody, any huge number of people. Just does somebody want to invest that much time in making, you know, a two minute video to get famous on the Internet? Yeah, I guess some people would. Uh, I, I almost hope it's real. I think it is. Um, and I'm not buying that it was found on eBay in just accident. No, no. And that, no. hey, we're going to show you a few things that might or might not be leaked, and that's all we can show you. Um, I mean, put it this way. Uh, somebody did an, like an unboxing and a really, really good walkthrough of the LG, uh, was it the Esteem on Metro PCS? And the dude mm-hmm. did a great job with it. Um, so I know, quote, amateurs can do good hands-ons and unboxings. This is not it. This is uh, somebody showed us what they wanted us to see, I think. Right. That's, um, you know, I'm not big on conspiracy theories, but if there's more, they would have showed us more. Well, well, that's that's the tell. I mean, he could have just clicked a couple different things and then there would be no question, but he didn't. But there's a twist to the story. So the phone doesn't work anymore, right? Mm-hmm. It's been bricked, supposedly by really? Google. Yeah. So that's the, mm. the chatter on XDA is that uh, the phone no longer works somehow. It melted. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not. I, uh, I don't know. I'm not. I, I'm, I'm just saying I've seen better unboxings. I've seen better hands-ons. And I think we saw exactly what they wanted to show us. You know, they're, I think they're managing expectations ahead of the launch. Now, that's not going to mean we don't get there on uh, October 11th in San Diego and they, you know, announce this thing and show it. And then 100,000 nerds all go, oh, that's it. That's all it was. Just like they did. <laughs> oh, well, of course. Yeah, that's going to happen. That, that's a given. It's absolutely going to happen. <laughs> so I'm excited. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing new hardware, new Nexus phone. I'm still trying to figure out why I wasn't sold on the Nexus S, and I fired it up this week, and I, I like it a little more than I used to, I think. But I'm ready. Uh, how do you guys feel about it being a Samsung device? I think we're all pretty sold on that, right? It's going to be you know, the Nexus Prime or whatever from Samsung. Yeah, that means the screen. Yay. I'm fine with it. Have you seen the post today about... Uh, Samsung might be going back to pentile displays for 720p. No. Oh. Yeah, we knew yeah. that. Did we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. but it's. But I'm not sure remember, I care. AMOLED pentile is a whole lot nicer than LCD pentile. Still not uh, great. Uh, but you remember the Dink or the original Nexus? Yes. Yeah. You know, that's it, a whole lot nicer looking screen than. Oh, okay. There, yeah, there, I say it. In that case, I'm fine and. I tell you, I'm really getting tired of people bad mouthing devices they've never touched, let alone have even been announced yet. So, <laughs> oh, the Nexus is gonna suck. It has pentile display, and blah. it's like, okay, no, just let's wait and actually see the device first. I think that's just but that's me. half the fun. No, that's not fun. <laughs> that's I've got. I know I say this every week now. I've got enough devices that actually exist that I have to deal with. <laughs> so maybe it's just me. Um, 720p, Jerry. Yeah, I would love to see it four inches or smaller, but I think I'm going to learn to live with 4.56, whatever the hell heck it was. Yeah, I mean, we've heard 4.65 too. That's pretty damn big. I mean, that's bigger than any of the Galaxy S2 phones I have here. Maybe the bezel's a little smaller, maybe? I hope. I maybe hope. it doesn't have capacitive buttons, and that's where they're getting the extra real estate from? That I don't hope. I, I hope it's it's not just. I don't want to make any mad, but anybody mad, but I don't care for the three D or the Droid X tall narrow style. Right. I like right. a you know a little bit easier to type on, and you know I hope that they don't go that way. Now Renee's lurking in the background. There, Are you getting a little jealous that uh, we're going to have new stuff to play with this fall, and you're not. Ah. You're just going to have a refresh. <laughs> Such a cheap shot. Well, first, um, you know, I, I love the Nexus one. I bought one as soon as it came out on Rogers AT&T Frequencies Unlocked. I did not mm-hmm. get a Nexus S because as much as the Nexus one was like the, the look ahead at what Android was going to become, I thought like the Nexus S was more a summation of what it had become. So I'm really, I, I'm primed to buy a next generation Nexus. I just found it odd that the, the Nexus S was Samsung and now the next one is also going to be Samsung and they're not sharing that, you know, candy store a little bit more. If it had been Motorola, everyone would have cried conspiracy. Right. Yeah, that's true. 
I'm glad it's Samsung. The, the only thing, the the original Nexus S, was, or the, yeah, the original Nexus S was um, machined so well. It was, you know, it was like really durable. I think the Samsung phones are a little bit plasticky. So I'd like to see that, you know, durability come back. Um, the HTC mm-hmm. originally did, but um, I don't know. Samsung's quality has come up quite a bit in the last, uh, since the last phone they put out the whole Galaxy series with the GPS issues and all that kind of stuff. I posted on Google Plus that I think the Nexus One is still probably the best phone to come out in the past two years. Or in, yeah. Actually, I think what I said is it's the best HTC phone ever, period. Oh, I have to agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And not yeah, to say, like, H- the rest of them are even crap. Even HTC <laughs> exceeded themselves on that one. Yeah, I, I think they really did. Um, just the build quality... I mean, this thing is still put together, and I've taken this phone to hell and back, and my Thunderbolt is just torn to pieces. I don't know what happened to that thing. I, mean, yeah, I, I have to, I have to try fast. not to use it in like videos and pictures and stuff because the first comment is always, "God, what happened to that phone?" <laughs> so I'm, I no, I'm perfectly excited for Samsung hardware, especially with the Galaxy S2 phones that are out there. Um, I was telling Renee earlier, I mean, this is just really, really good hardware. My only complaint is that the designs are somewhat uninspiring. Um, but, you know, technically the hardware is just top notch. I did go try one out, Phil. Georgia and I went to try one out before the last iPhone Live, and we both liked it. it was, it's closer to the AT&T version they have here, not the giant okay, yeah. one. But it yeah. was really nice. And I will say, in defense of Samsung, that the, the Galaxy S1 was kind of mid-range Hasbro plastic, and this is definitely high-end hero-quality Hasbro plastic. Right. Well, it, it really does feel different, and I have this, the Sprint version and the AT&T version here, and it really does feel different than the Nexus S, I think. I mean, they're both plastic They're made out of plastic. Um, yeah. I mean, the difference is you're talking a hard, glossy plastic versus soft touch. That's really all you're talking about. It's not like yeah. he doesn't use plastic. You know, it's not like Motorola doesn't use plastic. They all use plastic. Um, but it's, it's just really a different design. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, any other uh, kind of predictions on what the hardware is going to be that we see? I actually have a question. Um, yeah. You know, one thing I notice every time I go from a 4-inch phone up to like a 4.5 4. phone like the Galaxy S2, it seems like the keyboard is less responsive. It seems like overall, even though there's a faster processor, on the um, Galaxy S2, I feel like you know I can type really faster. The the keyboard's more responsive, um, and the Galaxy S2 just isn't isn't that way. So I'm curious, have you had that same experience between the two phones? No, no. Um, I mean, a make sure you're using the same keyboard, right? I think any yeah. two phones, you're just going to have software differences no matter what, and so that's one thing when I rail a bench people uh, you know, rail about people doing benchmarks and why I don't think they really matter is because the software tweaks on any two phones are so different. Um, mm-hmm. but I've never really noticed in keyboards and generally, generally I've been using swift key, uh, you know, for the yeah. past few months I've been using the HTC keyboard again recently cause I just, uh, put gingerbread on the thunderbolt and I always forget how good that keyboard is. HTC did a really nice job for its keyboard. We've seen a lot of crappy stock keyboards out there. HTC's is not one of them. Um, it's almost as I would say it's just as fast. There are differences in the way they're coded. I think SwiftKey has nailed the uh, the uh, not soft press, but like the secondary function. You know, the time that you hold a key down before it does the uh, secondary function. I think SwiftKey has mm-hmm. nailed it. I don't know why everybody else has struggled so much at that. Um, but no, I I wouldn't say the larger one really makes a difference. It could be just the the overall size of it too. I just find it a little bit harder to type on a four and a half inch phone versus a four inch phone. Mm-hmm. I guess because you know, it's so like big in my hands. I don't know. The mini tablet. Yeah, I, I tell you, going from four and a half inches down to four point three really makes a difference. Um, four three, I don't want to go any bigger than that anymore. I use the Infuse for a long time. I've got the Sprint one here, but for me, and I have smaller hands. Mm. Um, so for me, four and a half, four point three is it. Oh, what else, um, Jerry? We need to talk about the uh, the list of software that leaked out. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, let's let's preface it that all right. So this is a list of APKs that are on are they on the system partition. I forget exactly where they are. It looks like system app. 
you know, the, yeah. the apps baked into the ROM. Right. Uh, I know some of it's missing. There's so, now there's this some is supposed to be from the Nexus, there. whatever. Yeah. 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 And uh, it does have two Verizon uh, APN things to, you know, connect up to Verizon's network. So wherever Hang it on, whoa, from, whoa, whoa. Verizon didn't, phone. Didn't somebody mention the next Nexus with ice cream sandwich on Verizon like two months ago? Yeah, somebody, but I don't believe him. <laughs> you, guys, you guys aren't going to let that go, are you? You seem shady. Hell no, I'm not. Absolutely not. Because we have a good source who gave it to us, and, and all I did was repeat it. So, <laughs> no, I mean, so that's something we've heard for a long time. And we've been back and forth, and we said in the post today, we've been back and forth about whether we thought Samsung would actually put out a Nexus device that it's not going to make money on, you know, because it doesn't have all the bloatware and, 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 and we should really quit calling it bloatware because I again I understand no, no, why no, I'm not gonna you crapware. Can. <laughs> crapware better. Uh, yes, you won't crapware. allow me to say what I want to call it, so I'll call it. Bloatware. <laughs> so I mean, do we still believe that Verizon is going to put out a Virgin phone with no you know Vcast apps, no Telenav, no anything else? Never, not in a million years. And I've been in the never category on that too. I I don't think so. Why should they? It, well, yeah, there's no, there's not as much money in it. Verizon mm. knows how to make money. Uh, I just, I, I just don't think it's happening. And and everybody, you know, I, I hate to burst anybody's bubble, but people will go and buy a phone. People like us for, or the people in the chat room. Oh, we want the Nexus device. But when the average person goes and buys a phone, they'll look at the Nexus device and then they'll look at the you know, the Samsung XXX whatever with all mm -hmm. the pretty widgets and the colors and, and, well, you know which one they're going to pick. I wish we could see usage rates on apps like those. Like, do people actually ever use them? Does anyone actually use VZ Navigator or the VCast Music or whatever the hell else is on there? I don't even know what's on there. I ignore I'll bet they do. Yeah? Yep. I mean, they're going to use whatever's on the yeah. home screens. Well, why would you that, search the market... You know, why would you search the market for a caller ID app if City ID is already built into your phone? Hey, when it works, actually, actually I notice it's there. <laughs> <laughs> I know I I know I talk crap about it every time I see it, but uh, when it's built into the ROM and I see the city, it's like, oh, hey, that's kind of cool. Oh, crap, that was City ID. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, and it's $3 a month. And, well, I only ever see it on review phones. <laughs> so. yeah. I get it for free. Hooray. No. Uh, At least they let you take it off now. That's you know that's what I'd be happy with. Like Sprint, the Epic 4G Touch is. Mm -hmm. I was able to take a lot of the stuff on there that they put on, so that was kind of nice. I'd like to see Verizon do that too. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jerry, you broke down some of the apps that uh, you saw in here, and, and let's go through them. The Chrome Bookmark Sync. I know uh, people are saying that's new. That's not new, new, right? No, it's it's been on Honeycomb, but uh, it's new for phones, and it's about time. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, and there have been third-party apps that do it, but it's good that it'll be built in. Let's talk about this Face Lock APK. Um, seen a lot of people saying we're going to have facial recognition in hunt in. I ice don't cream think sandwich. so. Yeah, I don't think it's ice cream sandwich. All right, I don't think it's a uh, facial recognition. Like it's going to see you, know it's you, and unlock your phone. Tell them why, Phil. Tell them why. Because and you're sure it was at Google I/O, Jerry? Because I was it's yeah. so long. Ago, yeah. I don't remember. But I specifically remember seeing, you know, in, in hearing Vic Gondotra from Google saying, yes, we can absolutely recognize your face. Like, it's, you know, I'm sure it's tough or whatever. We're like, yeah, we can do it. You're never, ever going to see that be made public. Absolutely not. I'm sure the NSA has it. I'm sure they sold it to them or, or gave it to them and very nicely and said, cool, don't follow us around anymore. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's your phone is not going to see your face and say, Hi, Phil. Would you, I'm going to unlock you now. <laughs> and if I hold it in front of Jerry's face, it's not going to say, oh, there's Jerry. You know, you can't get in. The, no, if you hold it in front of Jerry's face, doesn't it root automatically? <laughs> in fear, <laughs> yeah. It, it roots itself. Ouch. But uh, well, the potential for abuse is just way too high. Yeah. No, it's, it's not going to be facial recognition. Um, and if it is... I want it. <laughs> it's even better in the chat room. I see beard unlock. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so don't expect anything like that. What we do think it is, Jerry, keep going. Well, 
well, I'm, you know, this is just a wild guess, but you know how if you buy a point and click digital camera, they have a smile detection, face mm-hmm. detection software on them that knows, you know, how to focus on faces and pull them out of the picture. It very well could be something like that for the front facing camera for video chat or, you know, for the camera, uh, an improved face detection from some of the OEM phones we see. I think it, exactly. That's it, here's my question. Is it going to be built into Google talk or the hangout app? Or I mean, is that what it's there Ooh, for, cool. for like framework, uh, frame rate, frame rate, framework, frame weight. And, it, and in the chat, uh, somebody who might know what it is has spoken and said it's to know <laughs> what a face is in the new improved cam. And you know, that yeah. makes the most sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, so in two weeks, everyone's going to be, well, where's the facial recognition software they promised? <laughs> where's my face unlock? Oh, here it comes. I can hear it already. Uh, any other apps in there, Jerry, that we care about? Uh, a couple weirdly named APKs that might be some eye candy or, you know, some weird background processes, but nothing really groundbreaking. You mentioned uh, a digital equalizer. Now, that's in, like, CyanogenMod has one, right? Didn't mm-hmm. somebody finally come up yep. with one a few few months ago yep. like back in the I spring, would love I think. to see that in, in stock Android yeah so that that's new uh, it's new to the AOSP I guess or will be maybe but it's not new to yeah. Android like this won't be right. the very first one right right is this going to finally give me the Mateus Duarte goodness that I've been waiting for for so long Ooh, I don't think so not yeah, Jerry's nodding yes but not <sighs> yeah. Think so? No, I was just moving. Uh, I, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't think you're ever going to see what a lot of people want out of out of AOSP Android. I, I think it's designed to be thin, light, and fast. Mm-hmm. And if you want to make it look pretty, go to the market, download stuff. But they hired him, Jerry, and he made WebOS look so beautiful. Yeah, but uh, look at the... My biggest thing is if you look at a honeycomb tablet, the way the notifications are done in the bottom right, that's genius. That's that's not beautiful as far as, you know, pretty eye candy, but it's beautifully laid out. It works perfectly. And, you know, I think that's the kind of stuff he's he was working on. I, hope. I think people are people are waiting to see a UI with like a Matias Duarte signature down the bottom. <laughs> and that's not going to happen. I, I think you're right. I think the changes we're going to see are, are going to be more subtle. Um, and, you know, good design happens and you don't even know it, right? So I, I think the really good stuff we see, you'll just never know. So usability. Right. Well, the manufacturers on the UI too, right? HTC and Samsung, they all have their own mm-hmm. thing that they're doing. So why would uh, Android spend a lot of time on that? Or why would right. There's a good question. On that? Yeah. Hey, they've redone all the web stuff. They can, they can put a black bar across Android too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anything else on ice cream sandwich and the Nexus? That Give it to uh, me. I want to now. Um, All right. I, I will announce it on the podcast. Corey, I will buy you a Nexus phone. Give really? it to me. I want it now. Yes. I will on, buy Corey the next Nexus. Nexus. Awesome. And in Rock. fact, I'm going to buy one Nexus for me too. Nexus is for everybody. Uh, no, well, we're going to buy one for somebody else out there. If you haven't seen it, we're celebrating our 500,000 members of the forums and, uh, Friday, so we've been giving stuff away every day, and Friday we will we, we will be giving away the next Nexus phone. We'll do an IOU for it, and uh, so the day is announced. The day you can order it, we will order one for you, and for Corey. It is so amazing seeing the forums of scroll like they have. Mm-hmm. Incredible! But congrats, Corey. Thank you very much. Yay! You're a rock star. Um, let's see other big news this week. Hey, the uh, T-Mobile Amaze 4G was finally announced. I think I buried it in the show notes, but I think that's going to be a more important phone than a lot of us are uh, considering it to be. So, I mean, this is like the badass HTC phone right now. And as much as I love the sensation 4G, this is even a step further, right? Yep. I, I, I'm, I'm torn because if, they, if that <laughs> and the, the GSM Nexus comes out at the same time, what am mm-hmm. I going to do? I'm, you know, I'm not made of money, and I don't have Oprah buying me Nexus. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I, I want to get my hands on the Amaze. Uh, the other phone that uh, we're seeing up there is, and this was announced at the same time, we've got more details on the uh, Galaxy S2. 
and it is what we thought is the Hercules. And in fact, it doesn't have the Exynos processor, but it has Snapdragon, whatever. Fine. They had to do that for the radios. Um, not a huge deal by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, they're both going to be available October 12th. Uh, pre-sale starts the 10th. 259 for the Amaze. I think it's 229 for the uh, Galaxy S2. Really nice stuff. I think you, yeah. Yeah. But what yeah, yeah, and everybody's up in arms about the CPU. Oh, Jesus, I mean, they need to let that go. Oh, we talked about this last week, didn't we? I mean, you find me one person who can tell me the difference in using two phones, you know, blindly, a blind test, and say, oh, this one has Exynos, or this one has Snapdragon, or no. Just stop. If that's the reason you're buying the phone, you're buying it for the wrong reason. And you're right. a huge, huge nerd. A dollar in the douche jar. <laughs> I, I, I mean, Flame away, but I'm telling you, the Fascinate is equally as fast. I, I have both phones, and they seem equally as fast as the Galaxy S2. Are there a CPU There's a connoisseurs? slight difference, but not much. Are there like oh, yeah. No, no, Renee, they're called processor nerds. Okay. And look, there's, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I, I think it's a good thing. I think you should appreciate the device and appreciate the hardware. But the processor does not make the phone. I mean, it can make the phone, right? But enjoy the phone for what it is. And enjoy it for the totality of the design and the hardware. And not just, you know, don't, don't hate on the processor. Now, three years ago, it was a totally different story. Three years ago, you could watch uh, Qualcomm chips change from manufacturing run to manufacturing run. Mm-hmm. Not quite this so much is... now. But I'm well, in. It's memory fine. Memory is to... a bigger deal. No, oh, yeah, memory is a huge deal. Yeah. It, it's fine to like one more than the other. But, uh, I mean, anybody that says that the T-Mobile Net Galaxy S2 is going to be slow, well, it's not. It's just, it's not. Well, you say that. None of us has touched it yet. I, I don't need to touch it to know it's not going to be slow. Okay. Well, and, and here's my other thing I keep getting at, is, is what does fast mean? You know, what, what are you looking for these phones to do? What are you looking for a dual-core 1.5 gigahertz phone to do? You know, that you, when you say, oh, it's not fast enough, it doing what? But doesn't the second core usually let it do something else as opposed to running your phone? So if you have a phone that can do lots of video out or fancy whatever next generation video processing, then the second core helps you. But the phone itself is fine on a single core. Right, right. I mean, the UIs are, are plenty fast. You, you know, using the Infuse 4G, I can tell it's not quite as smooth in the UI as the uh, Galaxy S2. But you know what? I mean, A, I can deal with it. B, it's not that big a difference. It's just not, right? Well, on a small embedded device, the CPU isn't the bottleneck anyway. Right. So once you get above a certain speed and, you know, number of calculations per second, you can go as high as you want, and it's just not any faster. Um, so those are those. The other big device this week? The Kindle Fire on Amazon. <laughs> Ooh, my God. Ooh, Ooh, and this is that. really why I wanted Renee on the podcast, because this is a big deal. Um, so the Kindle Fire, seven inches. It's essentially the uh, BlackBerry Playbook. Only with an OS that people want to use. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, uh, you're even mean to Kevin when he's not here. Zing. Uh, yeah, I went there. All right, look, it's, it's the BlackBerry Playbook made by the same OEM. Seven inches, dual core processor, uh, IPS display, running Android 2.3, though I really hate saying that out loud because <laughs> it, we talked about this last week when I asked Jerry, you know, what is Android in kind of the existential sense? Um, so technically it's running Android. You won't see, you know, a stock Android UI on it. You, you, I assume they took it off, right? I, I assume it's not hiding in the background. Um, so it's got Android 2.3. It's got a custom UI. It's got Amazon Music, the Amazon App Store. It doesn't have the Google Market. Is it an e-reader or is it a tablet? That's the big question to me. It's a rablet. A rablet? A fablet? I think it's it's Amazon in your hands. Mm-hmm. It's 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 neither. Oh. It's just a, a a device to deliver Amazon's content right to you. And I'll bet they did a hell of a job on it, and I'll bet people love it, and I'll bet they sell a hell of a lot of them. It was already damned even before it was announced. You know, people were hearing, "Oh, it's 
better than the playbook or, oh, it's worse than the playbook. So I figured it'll be right along the lines of right down the middle. Well, that was that Ryan Block thing, right? He put out that that leak before it came out where he said that they, they couldn't make the tablet they wanted. So they ended up using a playbook as just to get one out before the holidays and the real Kindle Flame is coming out next year. Like, that's the worst thing in the world? I mean, the tablet, you know, the uh, playbook is not the worst hardware in the world by any stretch. No, it's fantastic. It, yeah, of all the tablets I've used hardware-wise, it's my favorite one. It's I think when the playbook was announced, totally yeah, when it was announced, we all sat back and said, holy crap, that's actually sounding really good. You know, what's wrong? Something, the other shoe has to fall here. <laughs> <laughs> and and it did, but you know I mean I don't know. And this is why I'm getting tired of everybody judging devices before they're even announced. It's ridiculous. Um, so it's not going to have your usual Google services. It's not going to have, I assume Google Maps, right? Doesn't have Google Maps. Uh, I heard doesn't even have GPS actually. Probably not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't have a phone. Obviously, it's, it's got to be two hundred bucks, Phil. They can't put that much in it. That's the big thing. It's two hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's a purpose. It's a purpose-built device, and I think mm-hmm. they're doing the right thing with it. Do what you want to do and do it well, and leave out all the rest. Right? Um, I'm kind of excited about it. I want to see it. I'm very excited about it. I were too. I think it's going to yeah. grow the tablet market considerably. All right. Well, let's talk about that because right now they're saying it's coming down to the Kindle Fire, which again nobody has touched. <laughs> and it's coming down to the Kindle Fire and the iPad. And a couple of reasons for that. I mean, this is a consumption device, right? It's not a creation device. You're not doing you know, right. spreadsheets on it. And I still argue that nobody's doing spreadsheets on anything else either. Um, you know, Renee, yeah. com- Renee, coming from the iPad you know, end of things, how does that sound? Does that make sense to you? You know, the interesting thing about these markets is the minute this thing came out, we we all saw those giant all-cap iPad killer headlines. Which mm-hmm. made oh, it that and that just needs to stop. That's. Mm-hmm. But the thing the is, the iPad is not going away. If you look at the market historically, some no. people would buy an iPhone and they'd buy an iPod Nano and an iPod Shuffle, uh, iPod Shuffle, and a lot of people bought an iPad and an Amazon Kindle because there's definitely a market for a dedicated device at a certain price point. And I think this is the same thing. The iPad is going to occupy a certain area of the market, and the Kindle is going to create much like the iPad did a whole second probably pretty large segment right. of the tablet market. I agree. Right. I, I, I think that the, the Kindle Fire is more the portable DVD player killer yeah. than it is the iPad killer. And it's, it's like uh, Corey said, it's purpose-built. This is, as much as Android is a Google services platform, this is an Amazon services platform. It might as well be a giant pipe to EC2 and, and the rest of Amazon's computer network just being held in your hands. Exactly. I just interesting. bought one. Oh, you saw one? I just bought one. Oh, you just bought one. <laughs> right now, this second. <laughs> I did. <laughs> this discussion led me to buy one. One thing I found interesting was the uh, Silk browser, which mm-hmm. I think is a horrible name for a browser. But that's what they're calling it. They're calling it the Amazon Smooth. Silk browser. And it basically sounds like they're doing what Opera Mobile has done and to a lesser extent Skyfire. Uh, Tim Bray said the same thing, so I'm not, you know, <laughs> much much smarter man than I, uh, but you no, know, it, it's not a new thought. Um, I mean, basically, they're they're pre-caching stuff. Um, and they they're compressing the data through their servers. Yeah, so it, it's supposed to make for a really good browsing experience. And it's got a WebKit front end, just like Android, just like iPhone, just like WebOS, mm-hmm. just like everybody but um, Microsoft and mobile. Yeah. Interesting. Be- I'm a little concerned about, uh, you know, what are they going to do with logins and SSL and that kind of thing, you know. But then again, they have RIM and Opera to look at. They know how to do it, so I'm sure that they're going it the right way. RIM and Opera break SSL in order to do the cache connection, and Amazon sounds like they're doing it a bit differently. They're not trying to – RIM wants to conserve data, so they crunch it down. Amazon mm-hmm. wants to accelerate data, so they're, they're pre-rendering and, and shipping you a, a version that's Kindle-optimized. What about, all right, so we've got movies. Uh, you're getting, what, 30 days of Amazon Prime. You've got music. Uh, you've got movies. You've got what's missing. You're going to have shopping in it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Anything else? Well, books. I, I really hope all these rumors about the lending library comes, comes to fruition. That'll be a nice touch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the picture shows a Watchmen comic book, Phil, so I'm hoping that Amazon at least will have some sanity across their various media, newspapers, magazines, whatnot. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure they will. And that was something, I mean, Renee, you and I have talked about this a long time back from when the iPad was announced. That was something I thought Apple really dropped the ball on or just yep. didn't have it ready to go. And and really, really could have done some great stuff. And we've seen really good things. You know, Flipboard, uh, the Pulse News Reader is really, really good. Uh, but the whole publishing thing just didn't take off the way that I thought Apple was going to do it when it launched. And really could have been awesome. We have News Rack coming in iOS 5, but there's little to no indication of what that's going to be yet, except for a very Kindle-like service. Right. Um... You, you would think else? that they would put something out that's a little bit more diverse though, and take advantage of the whole Android store that they have. Had, what do you mean more diverse? Like just more open and just do whatever you want with it. Amazon, I, I don't think so, Corey. I, I don't think yeah. that's their MO. If, if I yeah, can, I mean, that turns it into another tablet. If, if so any, you, don't, you don't think they'll have a second device that does that? The thing with Amazon is if you've had any experience with Amazon before they got into electronics, they are they make Apple look like the open kid on the playground. They charge through the nose. They control mm-hmm. everything. We've seen them edit App Store descriptions. If you've ever looked at an author or publisher agreement with Amazon, um, the, the trains in Amazon land run on time, Corey. Yeah. Yeah. November 15th is a long time from now. I, I think we all agree the $200 price point is awesome. That's perfect. Right? That's fantastic. Yeah, that's, it's a killer feature. November 15th is a long time from now. It's a month and a half. All right, it's not that long. But it's a long time in this world. Uh, and we're in day two of Kindle Fire World. So you know, a week from now, I'm sure we'll be on to the next cool thing. Do you guys worry about the short attention spans and you know, something bigger coming up between now and then? Or better? Or no? uh, I, I don't think we're going to see anything in the same league as the Kindle Fire for a while. I'm sure Ooh. we'll see something better, and I'm sure we'll see something worse. But I, I still, this is not built to compete with tablets on any platform. Is the Nook in trouble? No. And I've said this no, before, and I'll so. say it again. Um, a couple of reasons why. And I think I kind of wrongly going to brought this up and then disappeared on Google plus and that, um, or maybe it was on Twitter this morning. Uh, you know, Amazon doesn't have a, a physical store, but they will have these in best buys. I'm sure. Right. Just like they do the Kindle now, best buy target, wherever, uh, Barnes and Noble has a dedicated store. The very first thing you see when you walk into a Barnes and Noble store is about three people trying to sell you a nug color <laughs> and, really? and probably more important, trying to sell you cases. Um, <laughs> Barnes, so Barnes & Noble has the brick-and-mortar aspect that I think you can't beat. The other thing they've done that I think is excellent is they say, here's a scary tablet thing that can read books and do all sorts of cool stuff. But we're not going to just hand it to you and send you out the door. Come back on Saturday. We're going to teach you how to right. use it. There are going to be a lot of people here who are in the exact same boat as you are. And you're all going to leave feeling better about yourself because you're going to know how to use this $250 thing you just bought. We're not just sending you on your way. And I don't think Barnes & Noble's got enough credit for that. I think they've done an excellent job with customer education and taking the scary factor out of an e-reader and out of this little electronic thing. You know, I mean, you don't see people our age in those uh, classes. You see older people, and that makes yeah. sense. But that's a lot of money out there that, that they're not turning away by keeping it this scary, cold object. You know what makes me sad, though, Phil? Amazon uh, Fire, U.S. Yes. only. <laughs> That's got to change at some point, right? They promised me yeah. Amazon MP3 three years ago in Canada, and I still open up. I go to the post box every morning, and I look inside, <laughs> and I don't see my Amazon MP3. Okay. I want to give them my money. Please take my money. <laughs> I don't claim to be any Apple expert, but isn't that how uh, the iPhone started out as well? The iPhone was uh, America, England, Ireland. It was about four or five countries when it started. But you can still buy iTunes content everywhere. I just want to be able to buy that Amazon content because I think it makes iTunes have to be more competitive internationally. They've got to open yeah. it up at some point, right? Right. And don't get me wrong. I mean, it is a complete pain in the ass to try and negotiate deals internationally because every country is its own fiefdom for music and movie and book and everything rights but amazon is big enough to do it well you know if, if this were samsung or even you know some other company putting this type of device out i think it would be a little bit tougher but this has the amazon brand name on it yeah. so mm-hmm. i think there's going to be some serious competition between the nook and this device the fire well and it, and it's not like amazon's not already in like every you know 
computer now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love oh. Amazon. I'm I'm kind of excited to have it just a Amazon centric device and one. Yeah, like huge. having that package show up every day. I'm a Prime member. I buy stuff because <laughs> I'm excited to see it come. <laughs> And one click, Mia yells one at click me, is huge. Daddy, is that, who's that package for? Is that for you? Why you get somebody? I never get a package. I'm like, it's Amazon Prime. Well, it's going to be a lot faster, too. I think the Nook is just a little bit, um, it's not quite as smooth as I would expect it to be. Mm-hmm. I think the Fire is going to be a little bit faster as well. I think it's going to be really good. I can't wait. A month and a half to go. We'll get one. We'll have one. Are I think we're going to give one the, away, too. The root the Fire questions yet? No, no, we haven't. Jerry, you think we're going to root the thing? Uh, that's going to depend. Yeah. Will we? Yeah, we'll do it eventually. I, I uh, think PC Mag did a story that uh, was quoting Amazon as saying, we're not going to stop you. Like, we're not going to help you, but we haven't done anything to try to lock it down either. So if that turns out to be true, it'll be absolutely wide open a field day. Yeah. You'll have a, a playbook, playbook that really runs Android. Mm-hmm. The first thing I'm going to do is get Amazon off there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put on Barnes and Nobles. Take See, that. See why? Uh, enjoy the device. I'm being very zen-like these days. I'm like, I want to experience the device as the manufacturer and God intended. And I don't know. Step that is no up. fun. <laughs> That's not who old. we are. I'm getting old. He's stepping on my toes. My, I'm gonna put touch whiz on it. I think it's <laughs> funny. Like I look in the forums, and it's you, you'll see on. Um, you know, everybody's trying to root their phones. So they get this or that off of it. You know, like it's a Samsung phone. And so you have all these people trying to get that off of it. And then you go over to HTC and they're trying to get those same things so they can put them on their phones. Right. You know, it's like, I want sense. You the grass is always phone. greener. I want sense. So I think I Panda sense. brings up a good point in the chat room and one that Jerry's not going to like. But yeah, I don't think you're going to see Honeycomb on it. <laughs> no. No, Sorry. Honeycomb made by Apple. It's closed. They're saying I need an iPhone. I don't need an iPhone. We have an iPhone here. My wife has it. I was playing with it over the weekend. And the iPhone UI just, I I don't like being told what to do. I don't like being told, hey, you have these icons. This is how it's going to be. So when I say, you know, I don't want to mess with things anymore, I'm not going that far. I'm not not quite going to that extreme. Mine is out of a a lack of time and energy, not a lack of caring. I was about to pass you some (laughs) Kool-Aid. Hey, and you will never get me to use iTunes if I can at all help it. I'm not using it anymore either, iCloud, baby. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, what else? The Thunderbolt has gingerbread. That's kind of a big Ooh. deal. Yeah. Especially because there are other devices that don't. <laughs> um, I've been running it for, what, 24 hours now? Two days? Um, you know, it looks and feels the same. There are small differences. The, uh, the notifications bar has changed, and it now has, uh, you know, the quick settings that we had in a later version of Sense. So that was kind of cool. Um, but it's fast, and, and I already used it, so this thing is totally clean now. So that's part of why it's faster. Um, but that's good for the gingerbread people. If only it actually made my poor phone look better, because it's just torn to pieces. Poor I heard it thing. has Super AMOLED now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The update actually gave me a whole new screen, and it's it's now QHD. And <laughs> no, it didn't. Sorry. <laughs> you can over the air download pixels. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty sweet. Nice. And Beats Audio, they're saying in the chat room. That's aw- that's the best update ever. Uh, the, Screw they'll Mango. They'll probably get Beats <laughs> Audio on it. Uh, they might. That wouldn't surprise me at all, actually. Or you you mean officially or hacked? Well, hacked, hacked. Okay. Uh, officially, I don't think so. Yeah, not unless Doctor Dre comes to your house and changes your speakers out. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you don't want to be more zen. You want to be able to hack so you can do these things. So today is Thursday, and believe it or not, it was only on Monday that uh, Andrew Vaca was in Manhattan and went to the Galaxy Tab eight point nine event. And it wasn't just the Galaxy Tab eight point nine. Now this is the 8.9 inch tablet that we first saw way back at CTI in March. Only it wasn't the, that was the really confusing one. They first showed us somebody else's version and then said, Oh wait, no, here's a, I mean, it was just a mess. Um, so finally it's out 
and he's got one and he is reviewing it. I still love that screen size. I can't wait for y'all to try it. Yeah. I like it better than seven inches. I like it better than ten inches. Uh, I hope apps will run properly on X. We're running into problems where apps aren't running on seven inch devices, and it's kind of. Um, so we've got that. You also have the Galaxy Player four and five. These are basically the iPod Touch of Android. Um, you know, Wi-Fi only, touch whiz, whatever. So, but they are cool. You, I tell you what really intrigues me about the 5.0. It's got like a 2200 something. Yeah. Million power. It's got a huge battery in that sucker. Wow. Gigantic. Um, what else? Motorola Zoom. You can now send in your 3G version and have it upgraded to 4G. Uh, 7 inch Toshiba Thrive, whatever. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, is anyone going to do that? N- yeah, actually. Well, how'd our poll turn out today? We did a poll. We should pull up the poll. Um, I think people are going to do it. It's like somebody told me on Twitter. I haven't waited this long to not do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it's the least they can do. So that made sense. Yeah. Um, hey, Re- while Renee's here, so uh, T Mobile said, Yeah, hey, we know all you guys want the iPhone on T Mobile, and we think that'd be awesome. And there are a million people out there who uh, are running the iPhone on T Mobile. So let's talk about these really cool Android phones we have, like the Amaze 4G and the uh, Galaxy S2, because those are great. You're totally going to want to go get them. And that was really all he did about the iPhone. But I think more important, it allowed me to run that picture that you guys see on your screen live there, me and uh, Carly Fox. (laughs) That was the most important part of that post. You really pretty her up there, Phil. Man, I (sighs) was... That picture turned out really good. Uh, <laughs> I hope that's her Facebook picture now because it really deserves to be. Should be. I need to make it mine. Man. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it was, it was an odd post. So it was like a blog post from the CMO of T-Mobile. And he's like, yeah, hey, we know you want the iPhone. Go buy an Android phone because we actually have those. It was just a bizarre thing to do from a, like a PR standpoint. I don't think I would have written that post. And they also came out and cited with... Uh with Samsung and the recent lawsuit, I wonder if something is recently broken down with Apple and T-Mobile because about a month ago, we heard that they were full speed ahead for the new iPhone. They had the marketing budget. They were starting right. to spend money. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like someone at T-Mobile got awfully angry at someone at Apple or vice versa. I'd I tell you what it was. It was the, uh, and here's the line that did it for me. Um, I just had it in front of me. Uh, we are interested in offering all of our customers a no compromise iPhone experience yep. on our network. That so means seventeen hundred, nineteen hundred, or twenty one hundred megahertz AWS frequencies. Yep. I don't. I don't think Apple can make an antenna to do that. They had enough trouble making an antenna to handle AT and T frequencies. I'm, they're not Nokia. You don't think it means they couldn't compromise on the size of the money bag? <laughs> well, we know we know that app, that iPhones make a ton of money for a carrier. If you look at Verizon mm-hmm. or AT and T results, uh, people want it because it, it it's a very good value prop for a carrier, and it does a lot for that famous Dieter Bone saying the ARPU. Um, and if they could get it, I'm sure they would. It just it, something really funny seems to have happened in the last month. Weird. Well, it was a funny story for a Tuesday or whenever that came out. <laughs> In the midst of everything else, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, it's still not getting the iPhone. Yeah. See ya. Uh, so that's that. You guys want to do a couple of emails and we'll get out of here? Sure. Oh, is that late already? Oh, yeah. We've had a good night. Wow. Oh, dear. It is. John writes, I have an unlocked Nexus S in the UK on O2. I am having to switch off 3G and put the device in 2G mode most of the time. Is there a way to only activate 3G when required? For example, when I'm web browsing or uh, buying an app. Or, or, sorry, or by app type. So, you know, use it for a browser or Gmail. Or uh, Also, is there any way to stop the phone from holding on to a weak 3G signal by setting a signal threshold? So if the 3G signal isn't strong enough, it says, all right, you're not strong enough, I'm turning you off and quit trying. Because, as we mm-hmm. all know, that's what really kills a battery. Jerry, any of that make uh, sense? Yeah, I, in, in the settings, you can tell it to use 2G networks only. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I first you know, got my Nexus one T-Mobile's 3G around here was really bad. And I had to do that, set it, you know, to 2G only, uh, activate 3G when required. I, I don't know. I'm thinking that that's going to be APN settings and you may even need root to do that if something exists, but, uh, force it off 3G and onto 2G. That's easy. It's 
settings, wireless and network, mobile data. It's right there down at the bottom. You can check around, check it. Would Tasker do that? I know that's kind of everybody's go-to. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I, 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 I know they've baked it into like Cyanogen Mod with mm-hmm. a 2G, 3G toggle. But I can't think off the top of my head of anybody else that has, you know, any any widgets or any apps that have that function built in. I'm sure somebody in the chat room is going to chime in or if not, somebody will email us and maybe next week we'll have an answer if there is one. But uh, I don't know. It sounds interesting, but would you really need that? Like I, he says for apps or web browsing, but. Yeah, if well, if you're on a crappy you battery, yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, nothing will kill a battery like searching for a signal all day long. Yeah, unless you're using LTE, and, you know that'll kill a battery like anything. Anyway, mm. who's next? BJ writes: Is there an app or oh, excuse me? I gotta make the bigger the window a little bit bigger. Is there an <laughs> app or setting to save Wi-Fi profiles, access point names, and web keys to either the cloud SD card? Or export them, export them somehow, like email, because I hate losing my nine save profiles if I flash ROM. Hard reset, wipe a phone, or switch devices. Any ideas? Thanks in advance. So if he's flashing ROMs, titanium backup will do it. Yeah. And he's good. Yeah. yeah. I think he mentioned that too, right? <laughs> and I need to find his whole email. I think he might have mentioned that. Um, I tell you what, I've been using more and more is WPS. Now, it's not in every ROM on every, like, you know, custom ROMs. I don't even know if it's in there. Um, and it only recently started popping up in official ROMs. You guys know what that is, WPS? Wi-Fi protected setup. You hit a button mm-hmm. on your router, and then it automatically connects to your phone as it's searching for it. It's pretty awesome. I like I'm it. i trying to well, think of where I just saw also, that. Uh, doesn't Google back up all your settings, too? Like, when you sign in, you have the option of backing up all your settings and stuff. Yeah, but I would never recommend that to anyone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No. I, no, I, I've had too many boot loops from that. Really? Yep. Well, we don't count, but yeah. No, you're right. You have a good point. You jump from device to device, it's yeah. not going to work very well. So do a <laughs> quick search of app brain. It looks like there's some things in there you can use. And I always forget to turn that off whenever I start up a new Sense phone. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> damn it. Why do I suddenly have 30 apps downloading at the same time? All right, who wants the next email? I got it. Keith writes, hi, hey, guys, love the show. I have an original unrooted dink that has not yet gotten the update to Gingerbread. I know they roll these out in phases, but my wife got her update three weeks ago. I had issues with some apps not updating, which I was able to solve by manually removing a file that I read was causing these issues. I was hoping it will help with the update as well, but no luck. Any suggestions? Uh, if you're stock and not rooted, just I'm sure in the forums they've got a link for the manual download location and instructions. We will have a post up on thir- or on yeah. Friday explaining how to do it. Okay, because so I mean yeah, it's, we, it's fairly easy to flash. We've gotten a lot of people saying they never got the update. Um, the Dink was one phone. I think was it the Droid Two or the Droid Three was another one where we seemed to get a lot that didn't update for some reason. So, yeah, just do the manual update, uh, and we'll have instructions to do that. And if you don't want to wait, go look in the forums. It's not Actually, just go go look in the forums anyway. <laughs> <laughs> go look in the forums. Say hi. Swing by the store. Buy something. You know. Nice. Hang yeah. out. <laughs> I'll take the last one from Steve. He writes, is there a way to set up a Google Market account on multiple phones? Now, that's something I know something about. So on multiple phones without giving all the phones Gmail access. I'd like to share a Market account with my wife, but since it's tied to my main Gmail account, I don't really want her having access to my emails on her phone and vice versa. Nothing I can think of because that's all tied together. You can tell it to not sync the Gmail or not sync contacts, and then you won't see them. Uh, but she's still going to have access. All she has to do is hit the button and turn them on. Yeah, you can't do it. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. You I mean, the only other thing I would do is make a whole new account and you know go that route. I know it's a pain and not what you want to do, but that's the best answer I got. Well, there you that's have it. it. We're done. I thought the dog what? was coming back with the answer. I'm still waiting. <laughs> 
<laughs> I sent Ben out to find the answer. It's getting no, that's dark it, we're done. Now, so that means the podcast is ending. The podcast is ending. We are over. We uh, have done an entire hour of video. And if you uh, want to know why it worked, it's because it's not on my computer. <laughs> there you go. So, as always, be sure to email us at podcast at androidcentral.com. You can get us all on Twitter at Android Central. I am at Phil Nickinson. Jerry is at GB Hill. Corey is at C Streeter. Renee is at Renee Ritchie. Hi, Renee. I didn't forget about you. Nice. And uh, you can go to slash Android Central and get all the other uh, writers on our Twitter list. You can find us all on Google+. Plus. Just go to Google+, Plus, search our names. You'll find us. Uh, we are there. As always, we are brought to you by the Android Central Store. You can get them at store.androidcentral.com or call 888-468-6158. And I can inform you that they are getting the stuff in for the newer phones. We've got a whole bunch of Bionic stuff in. Uh, we're starting to get stuff for the uh, Sprint Epic... No, sorry. For the Samsung Galaxy S2 Sprint Epic 4G Touch. Oh, <laughs> comma. Comma. <laughs> so the newer phones, uh, cases and batteries and stuff are rolling in now. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail at that same number, 888-468-6158, extension 222. That's it. Uh, big Android barbecue starts Friday. We'll be there all weekend. So if you happen to listen to this podcast before it's done, be sure to uh, check us on Twitter and Google Plus, and we will have pictures and a whole bunch of hijinks going on, I'm sure. Jerry? Corey? Cool. Renee? Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. So don't get caught. I wish there was. <laughs> Save me from giving my credit card uh, number to the wife. People listening, Phil got attacked by a wild animal, and now he's run for his... I think, I know, I think Phil is beating yeah. the wild animal. <laughs> the host of our show has left. Now we can say anything we want. Phil, is that a small bear? Do you smell bears in Florida? <laughs> that was my 75-pound uh, dog who managed to sit through most of the podcast. I think he made it longer than half the people in the chat room. He's nice. behaving. <laughs> Is he doesn't bark? Did you guys finish the answer for me? Or did we all just uh, look at my dog? We, we did. I don't know. It seems like we did. Okay. Well, yeah. Then uh, Corey says we did. Well, hell, we did. <laughs>